welcome back. First strike, it's UFC Fight Night. Excited to break down this card with you guys. I'll be at UFC Fight Night. Take a note. This is an early start on Saturday. It's a 12-15 first punch for first strike. And we're looking at this thing from a UFC perspective. Going to start for you guys, as we always do, about 30 minutes before the fights. Um, see how we get to get to the window and get paid. That being said, though, plenty of time to get to it. We got three fights we're going to break down for you. Before we do that, I'm joined with the Apex Predators of the Octagon. I got MMA Jeff and Subhuman Gaucho Boys. We had the week off. Sub, how did it treat you? Oh, it's been uh, so far so good, man. So far so good. Uh, really good week in soccer so far. And, uh, you know, speaking of, it's big, big Saturday. I love these noon starts. I know some of the audience in North America is a little bit divided by whether or not they like the uh, early or late. I love these early starts, man. I love them. But uh, all that said, we've got a bunch of action kicking off at noon. EPL action, 1230. It'll be concurrent. Lots of uh, NCAA football action. And uh, Jeff is returning from the boonies. He hasn't had internet or television for the better part of a weekend, so I'm sure he's a, as excited as I am. Jeff, uh, couldn't be more excited. I'll tell you what, we got 14 fights on the UFC card, and as you had mentioned, we got some NCAA. Uh, there's got to be some preseason hockey. I haven't looked into that yet, and uh, it's going to be an exciting weekend. I am glad to announce I do have internet and TV, so that's always good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's important for the uh, – streaming and gambling side of what we're doing here for the weekends and you know how we get paid we love to get into these things give you guys our live bets i know we were talking even before we shot this tonight just about the opportunities there should be some really great prop bets that uh, you guys will catch from us on saturday as well but let's dig in let's get the sleeves rolled up i'm not even wearing sleeves it's still summertime but uh the chill is in the air that being said Let's talk about getting paid. Jeff's going to open us up with a little Kutalaba Ursuline fight, Jeff. Talk to us about how this one goes down and how you want to get paid. You know, I got to say, uh, Kutalaba at almost 31 years old has 28 pro uh, professional fights under his belt. No belt, but he's got them under his belt. He is uh, one in four in his last five, though. Uh, he's just looked like absolute garbage, not only in his last few fights, but in his last few years of fighting. Um, you know, he's... He hasn't taken some losses against some some guys that have big names. You know, Linz, Nachuflu, Walker, Span. He's lost against all of them, you know. But again, he's lost three of his last five by finish, and or gotten finished three of his last five. Um, you know, he he made it a fight against Linz. He ended up managing to go to decision. However, he did get beat by unanimous decision. Um, he seems like he's now the punching bag of the UFC. Um, he needs this fight as a win to stay relevant. Uh, if not only to uh, stay relevant, but potentially to keep his UFC contract. I don't know how many fights he has left on it, but if he keeps this uh, one and four losing streak rolling, uh, he's probably not going to get another one. Uh, Ursuline, on the other hand, he's he's a bit older, uh, I think by a year, six months maybe, but uh, he's trying to break into the UFC. He's ranked number one in Croatia. He is training with American top team. And that, let me tell you, if you want to break in and be successful, American top team's where it's at, a badass camp. Uh, you know, he's coming into this thing with a solid uh, 10 KO wins, and every single one of those has been in the first round. Uh, he shows the ability to go to the distance if needed. However, uh, you know, with his style, he doesn't necessarily need to show that he can go the distance. He comes out aggressive, pushing forward. Uh, he, he likes to throw that one, two, the left jab, the right overhand. And let me tell you, watch out for that right overhand because it is badass. Uh, Kutalab is going to need to try to slow this thing down if he has any shot at winning this fight. Um, I like Ursuline here to finish this one early, but I didn't want to get cute with it. I think uh, I think Ursuline's going to win this one. The money line at plus 100 uh, at MGM and a couple other books. Um, I've seen it's now minus 110 some other places. So I do think Ursuline's going to catch a little steam here. Um, I'm going to play – or I played this one early. So uh, I, I think it's going to – the line is going to get a little wider as we get closer to the fight. But uh, give me Ursuline, money line, let's roll. Yeah, I like it, Jeff. Um, I took some Ursuline action as well. Um, yeah, this uh, Ian Kudalaba fella, I mean, he's a finished product. We know what we're getting out of him. 
And uh, he's got a lot of downside. Uh, dangerous early, but that's about it. And, um, yeah, I like you, man. In the meantime, we've got a fight here. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Uh, Taylor Laplace, Vince Morales. Uh, excited to see where Mike is going with this one. What are you doing, Yeah, Mike? this is going to be a fun one to kind of look at because, you know, Jeff mentioned that the line is moving in the Ursuline fight. This line's moving as well. I mean, as we're doing this, this thing is continuing to climb. And I think it makes a lot of sense. When you figure this thing out, you got to certainly look at how's the style of the fight going to take place? How do the, What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What are some of the advantages and disadvantages that they're coming into? You can't start with any bigger disadvantage than going out there and Vincent Morales having just a short notice, one week to prep against the Taylor Lapalus, who's known he's going to be on this card from the get-go. Certainly, that's going to check the box initial disadvantage. It is a second tour of duty in the UFC. Uh, prior to, we saw Morales uh, was a decision guy, and he wasn't a specialist at it. He found himself in a lot of uh, unanimous decision losses. Um, but I think that's important to reference here because you got a professional coming in on short notice, and uh, with that five-fight win streak he had in the regional circuits, you know, maybe he's earned himself that opportunity to come back. But look at this number as we see it popping off. Lapalus opens up as a minus 350 favorite. I think that makes sense because you look at this thing, and not just the time disadvantage that's out there, but, man, I don't know how Morales is going to keep up with Lapalus. The guy just does everything, and he does it fast. He's a fast striker. He's you know, he's good at getting inside and out. He comes at you with a straight line. If he connects with you from the side, he does connect with you. And I just think all of that leads to disadvantage. Um, breaking this thing down and starting to look at, like, Lapalus Jim, you know, he fights at the MMA factory. We know those guys are champions. Uh, we see Cyril Gaon. We saw Naganu coming out of there. Uh, but for me, I looked at how does this fight finish? Well, I think it does go to decision. I think we've got these two professionals, these two experienced guys in there, because I don't expect Lapalus to that first round get himself knocked out. In fact, um, I don't expect him to do any knocking out here. Um, you know, we know Vincent isn't a grappler. Uh, he's more of that decision, as I mentioned, guy. And why not see this thing and going to decision with Lapalus at minus 145 to pop this number off? Again, it's moving as we do this video now that's gone to 60s and 165s in some books as well. So get that number while you can. Got Lapalus by decision. Hate to give out a bomb like that, but um, look, sometimes it makes sense. The only way for this fight to go down is to see the judges get weighed in, and Lapalus should show that um, he's the more experienced technician when it comes down to it. So give me that Lapalus decision. It's minus 145 still, but going to be moving by the time Saturday rolls around, boys. I like the look, Mike. Uh, Lopolis there, he is definitely quicker on the feet, and Morales is going to need to get his head off that center line. But uh, I like the decision uh, uh, call there. And uh, Sub is going to keep us waiting all night to bring us into the main event. We've got Moicano versus BSD. Sub, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah, man, I, you know, um, I love these main events. I've, I've been pretty sound with them. Uh, I did lose a co-main last week, but outside of that, I think I've only lost one main event, and I, I've been on a lot of main events. Um, so let's get right into this one. Let me start. You know, uh, I love Money Moicano. Um, this guy's my dude. I haven't watched his YouTube channel in a while, but it's it's a lot of fun. I think, uh, you know, now that it's fight week, I'm going to have to get hyped and uh, see what he's been up to. But, you know, you take a look at Hinato and – Really skilled fighter. Um, you know, he was a fighter at featherweight that was on everybody's mind once upon a time, future champion and etc. Had a bit of a down spell. He's a great BJJ guy and he's competent on his feet. On the other hand, you got this guy in Benoit Saint Denis, the Frenchman, and we are fighting in Paris, of course. You know, this guy, he, he's got all the aura. I mean, some of that was knocked off, if you will, when um, when Dustin Poirier knocked him out. I still i i have to uh, i have to edge this fight towards that BSD side, man. This guy, he has all the hardware. He's extremely dangerous. He's extremely big. I mean, if you, I, I have a feeling when we see the face-offs, it's going to be just apparent how much of a size difference there there is between these two men. And he's, he's far more dangerous. All that said, um, the way I want to look at this one, and we like to give you those lines that, um, you know, we can get a little bit ahead of the market. I think BSD is going to get crushed. He's already a 
one to three favorite. I think that's going to get bigger. So I want BSD and fight to start round two. It gets you a plus 110 as of today. I think he gets him out of there. Uh, Money Moicano, man, he's really tough. He's uh, he's one of these guys that's, uh, in his mind, almost too tough for his own good. you know. So I think he finds his way out of there. I think he even has a little bit of wrestling upside where he might be able to ground BSD in that first round. I think he can avoid getting knocked out at the very least, but I think this is BSD round two. Maybe it gets to round three. Possibly to round four. I, I very much doubt it gets beyond that. I like BSD here. I like him a lot. Give me him and that fight to start round two at plus money. There we go. A little BSD round two. Taking a shot with the uh, you know, the special forces operative out there trying to go do some battle. And we're going to do some battle on Saturday, you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Got a big Saturday coming with college football, NHL preseason. You name it, we're going to be tossing some cash at it. And you guys know Saturdays are the days for us to get that money. So appreciate you guys for MMA Jeff, for Subhuman Gaucho, for all the Sports Money crew. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on Saturday.